Do you have a mini badge, or is it kind of just normal? Maybe this is where we're different. It doesn't. Have you ever measured it? Measured the actual vagina? Like inside, like the depth vagina. The depth vagina, meaning how like do you measure a vagina? They, you have to go to this clinic. Wait, get out. You can actually measure your vagina? I don't know. I went to this like event where it was like vag thing. And I was like there and there was like champagne and macaroons. And they measured and then your you, vagina? And I went in for my little appointment and they like went in there and it was supposed to be like a muscle thing. I don't remember. I think it's for people that have had kids and then you tighten it. But w when she went in, she goes, okay, you're deep. <laughs> <laughs> Are you rolling? We're, we're rolling. Did you get that? I, I got it. I have a deep vagina. So you're talking deep? I don't know if it's deep, it, like deeper than... I just think she was like impressed. She was like, okay, you're deep. She's like, some women are really shallow. And then I asked her if my vagina was like ugly or attractive, like compared. Because I've always felt like... I don't know what it, you know, I don't see, I haven't seen a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. And so I never know what to think about it. Well, there's like the vaginas. Well, I want to know more about the deepness okay. real quick. So you mean like the, the depth of it vertically? Yeah. Not the width. Not the width. Not the girth. Oh, okay. <laughs> you don't have a girthy badge oh, is what no. you're saying? <laughs> no. But it's like, like, there's all different types of vaginas. There's all, all different types. types. Yeah. But they are different. Mine's more contained. Like, you know how sometimes they'll be like, and this is like a horrible, like, someone who says this publicly is Brittany Furlan. She always talks about her, like, roast beef vagina. It looks like a roast beef sandwich. You know how the roast beef sandwich, it goes out? The, the labia goes out? It's not contained, okay. like a hot dog bun. You know, there's like a hot dog bun. Yeah, so yours is contained. Yeah, I would say not 100%, but like pretty contained. I think mine's pretty contained. Right, pretty contained. But then there's some that everything's out. Just hello. And that's cool too. They're all fine. They're they all are. Great. They are. I shouldn't have asked the lady what she thought of my vagina, but she was like, it's nice. She said it's nice? And that After gave, she that said gave, it's deep, she said it's deep and it's nice, and I was like, you know, I had a pep in my step that day. But I, I want to hear more about this event. What the hell was it this called? Was years ago, I don't remember. It was in Beverly Hills. It was like, if you've had kids and you want to tighten your vagina and have stronger orgasms, come to this event. And you know where like, and you were like, I'm a kidless twenty something. Exactly. I was gonna... definitely the youngest person there. My fifty-five year old, maybe sixty year old friend invited me because she knew I had follow a following and maybe thought I would like promote it, which I didn't because I don't want anyone to know other than right now that I went to this event. Right. But so there was champagne and hors d'oeuvres and then they fingered you. With a machine. Did they make you do Kegels? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They asked me to do that. So I am big into like Kegels and stuff like that. I'm super into that. So I think like people think if you have kids, then it'll weaken your pelvic floor and it can, but if you exercise it and yeah. I have, I do all these exercises that it's the same. In fact, even stronger, I would say. Yeah. Than before. Yeah. I'm doing them right now. Me too. The whole time you've been talking yeah. and doing it. I'm kegling I right now. Strong. Like it's if weird. I, I could, I probably could, if long enough, I could have <laughs> orgasm. What? Yeah. Long enough. Kegel? You can have an orgasm through a Kegel? Probably if I kept going. If I kept going, it feels like I'm humping. I'm doing it I'm getting right warm. <laughs> Do you understand? Like, I'm... I'm I have, warm. I have a semi. Oh my God, it's happening. <laughs> Wait, honestly. Wait, I know what you mean. Like, huh, it does it feel happens. good. <laughs> it does. If you keep going and you think about it feeling good, it starts to feel good. But have you ever came from a Kegel? Not that I know of. But... You're saying Isn't that what happens when you orgasm? Don't doesn't it kegel itself without your acknowledgement? Or, yeah, I or suppose it <laughs> it does. Consent. But have you ever kegeled during sex? That's gonna blow his mind. You gotta try that. I think I have. Yeah. When he's in, you go. You yeah. gotta grab it. Grab it while it's in. Yeah, and then it and then it locks it yes. in. Yes. And then they can't pull yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, or it's like more. You're stuck in here, yeah. sucker. Yeah, exactly. And they're just like, oh, they're like, oh. 
yeah, it's and that's how you got. <laughs> this is a good start. Hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to hit that that subscribe button and hit that like button because um, it helps keep me going. And do a kegel while you're at it. If you could hit that like button and kegel at the same time, like why not? Why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you? Anytime I follow a person, you kegel. I kegel. I'm kegeling. I'm still kegeling. I've not stopped kegeling. <laughs> <laughs> so if you clench your butthole, apparently, I think it just happens naturally when but I. No, no, no. Up. But my pelvic floor therapist, because I had one, I got one after I had my first child because, because they say sometimes your muscles can go overly tight after a kid, which is insane. You would never think, but it can. So I couldn't have sex for six months after my first kid. I think isn't that normal? because it was painful and I. I, I, I remember we went tight. to Hugo's and you talked yeah. to me about this. Yeah. Do you remember? Yep. And so I had to go and to. You were like, I think there's, I think it's, and you called it a condition. Yeah. And she goes, don't do Kegels, whatever you do. <gasps> don't do it. Cause you're, you're too, you're, um, I can't remember how she described it, but basically the muscles were too tense. So I had to learn to relax them. Wow. Isn't that crazy? So you can allow him in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. So this party. Thank you for having me back. <laughs> I'm so glad you came back. Do you want to know back. more about the party? There was yogurt. Okay, I'm done with this party. I'm, I, I feel like we've, we've covered the party. What I do want to know is your parents got divorced when you were 18 years old. Okay, for them, this is coming out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> they, we, they were not involved in the previous conversation that we were having before they started recording. But yes, my parents divorced when I was 18. I just sound so, so insensitive. We're talking about yogurt. Your parents got divorced. divorced. <laughs> so your life shattered and you lost your sense of home at, at 18, was it? And you had to create your own home base and you had nowhere to go back to. Oh, how was that for Story you? Of my life. It was really, at first I was in denial. People would be like, your parents are divorcing. Oh my gosh. And I was like, I get it. I've been in relationships. So I really understand how like life works now. And then like five years later, I quit drinking and all the emotions flood up. And I was like, oh my God, I, I have no home. Oh my gosh. So my family is just not going to be what it was ever again. It was really wow. sad. Whoa. It was heartbreaking. Jeez. I but still think sometimes I think it's not, I don't know. It just, I can't, it can't be done. Like they're such a good match actually. If they can get their bullshit aside they're at, I'm like, oh, I know a really good girl like woman that you could be with dad. And I'm like, oh my God, it's Terry. And then when I think of it's... Terry, I'm like, who's a perfect guy? I'm like, oh my God, my dad. What? Yeah, so it's really weird. They're like one of the, I just think it'll be, I don't know why they can't just work it out. But they're friends now. Like you're going they're to friendly, their house. Sure. You're going to your dad's house with your mom to have dinner tonight. How did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't How know. How did you know that? How did I know that, Manon? Maybe it's because I follow you wherever you go. I see <laughs> when you're sleeping. I know when you're awake. I know if you've been bad or good. So be good. Goodness. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, well, he's making a salmon mm -hmm. and rice, white salmon? rice. It's gonna make you it's soup. Green beans and almond sprinkles. Oh, that sounds so lovely. Oh. Must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so, so, okay. 18, and then you mourned it five years later when you got sober. Now, when they divorced, were they able to be like, Friends, because it's weird because you were legally like an adult, right? So there was no like, we're co-parenting because they were together when they raised you. Yeah. But like... And they got along fine. So like, do, you didn't see the divorce coming really? Not really. Do you know, was there a inciting incident? Yes. We were watching American Idol. And my dad, That'll do it. I know, right? That'll do, not do it. not watch it <laughs> hey, with honestly, your family. Honestly. 
And it was yet again my dad getting frustrated at the commercials, which they happen in on TV. All sure, like sure, every sure. how 15 minutes yeah. there are commercials, uh -huh. and he's someone, and I do this now too, where I just mute the commercials because he doesn't want to be like programmed. He just finds them annoying, so he mutes them. But I think he was getting frustrated and was like, yeah, yeah, because he, he would get frustrated and like tried to fast forward and my mom just couldn't take it anymore. So she went to the garage and then I went with her. And at that time it was, it felt like it was her and I against him. Like I always, like her and I got along very well. Him mm. and I butt heads every day. Okay. Like I would come home from school, big blowout for whatever reason. Okay. Um, and then she was like, I think I'm going to leave. And I was like, that makes sense. So I didn't even try to stop her. Like, I was so mad at him that I was completely fine with her leaving. Wow. And, and now I'm like, Sh shoot, should I have just said, like, mom, please go to, like, can we all go to therapy? You know? But it wasn't that popular 15 years ago. So, like, everybody goes to therapy now, but back then it was, like, not as common. But is he still, is he still the same person he was? No, he com he's changed a lot because he lost her and then I went off to college. So I think he was left with himself and so he made some changes, which is actually a great thing. Do you think that they'll ever reunite in that way? I think that would be best. You do? Yeah, but I also think they need to take care of their mental health in the meantime. But I think everybody does. T tell me about when they started dating. Was that weird for you? Oh, other people. Yeah, sorry. When, sorry, when they started I, was like, I wasn't there <laughs> yet. <laughs> when they met, was that weird for you? When really they met weird. for the first time, was it weird? It was weird. Yeah, because you were like half an egg sperm. No, I wasn't even thought of. You weren't of. even thought of. Because they hadn't I mean, met you yet. you weren't that, but you were going to be that. I was going to be. I was like, who should I have my parents be? Yeah. Them. Yeah. So wait, um, but, but was it weird when they started dating other people? Yeah, it's still weird to me. And did you meet the other people? Yeah. My dad dated someone for 14, 15 years. 14 years? Yeah. And did they live together? Yeah, on and off. What happened there? I don't know. It's recent. Like a few months ago, they like oh. decided to take a break. Is this too... Can I ask if you liked her? She was really sweet. Okay. But she didn't speak the best English. Okay. She spoke English okay. and it was nice. But I think when they had dinner parties, it was all of her friends. And my dad doesn't speak Spanish and they would speak Spanish the entire time. Sure. And so he constantly felt left out yeah. and would have to ask them to be like, to, so he could feel included. Hey, can you speak some English? And he tried to learn some Spanish, but he, ha he wasn't very good at it. No. But I don't know. When my dad speaks Spanish, I feel like he sounds mocking. But he's really? not. It's just like my kid embarrassment. Like, don't try to do anything. That's whatever. No, yeah. My dad's the same. He, he speaks Spanish. He works It's um, like when they're like, with hola. A, yeah. My dad works Como with Como estas. Like, yeah, yeah. And you're like, uh, just stop. No, totally. Just say, yeah. how are you? They get it. Like, my dad comes home. He's like, donde esta, mama? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, just. I'm like, why do you have to say it like that? Why? I don't know. So I think after a while, and also like, I don't know, they have their issues, I guess. I think my dad really wants someone who get, like, gets his humor. Really? Or makes him laugh. And, and okay. I think she got his humor, but I don't know. I think he, I'm <coughs> projecting here. I think he wanted someone that could like play tennis with him. Do you know, did like, you like, play someone that could play tennis? When, no. when you were in the relationship, which we talked about last podcast, but that you were married for not a long time. How long was it? A mm -hmm. couple of months. Legally married? Yeah. Legally married a long time. Because it, we didn't file for divorce six months after everything happened. So it was over a year. Oh, wow. Do you think your parents knew there just, was something up? My mom says no. But your dad, yes. Can I, but, say, can I say what I think? Yeah. I feel like when at the wedding, I said to your dad, I was like, Manon and I are going to have a baby at the same time. And he looked at me and he was like, and he, he, there was this look of like, he didn't want that. 
he knew, like, I swear to God, it was a moment. And I remember clocking the moment where I was like, guess what? We're going to have babies at the same time. And I was expecting him to be like, cool. But instead he just, it was like this look of like this concerned dad or like his gut or something in him was like, I hope she doesn't do this with this man. It was the craziest thing, but I clocked it, but I didn't say anything. Obviously, I'm not going to ruin her wedding. I'm not going to go up to Manon at her wedding. By the way, I don't think your dad wants you to have babies yeah. with this man. Yeah, he will say after the fact that he had a really strong intuition about it, and his biggest regret is that he didn't do everything in his power to get me to not marry that man. Whoa. Whereas my mom... I think she was also, she's like more me where she's like, but he's so sweet and charming. He was so kind to me. And then when I remember we went to lunch one time and she said, but he's your person. So like, I think she wants to believe in the fairy tale too. Yes. Whereas my dad's more logical and more like very in, uh, very, I mean, he still is like having trouble with Johnny. So like, oh really? He just finds kind of an issue with any guy that I'm with. Well, especially now he's probably very skeptical yes. because of... That's true. Actually, before, yeah. before the guy that I married, he really didn't have an opinion much on the guys. He was just like, yeah, they're cool. And so you make been... sure they take care of you. Right. And now he's like making sure... But he, it hit him so hard when Whoa. that, when the marriage, yeah, he was like, this man owes me the amount of the wedding. He, he gets sick to his stomach even just hearing the guy's name. He wants nothing to, like, he will not let it go. What? He's really? Still, yeah, he's still pretty upset by it. He still holds on he to He feels it's his fault. Oh. I know, it's heartbreaking. I've yeah. had to grab him and be like, Dad, I take full responsibility for this. I needed this to happen. I'm so much stronger now. I'm so much happier. I learned such a beautiful lesson. Yeah. I'm completely complete with everything that happened. And had you even tried to stop me, I would have just ignored you. Like, I just know. Whoa. It, I mean, I think... That being said, he did push me to get a prenup, and I did do that. So thank God for that. Yeah. Thank, yeah. Thanks, Dad. Because that would have just... Oh, yeah. No, that's huge. That you Which was that. also sketchy, because my ex was like, sure, I'll sign that, whatever you're comfortable with. So it was like, well, then why did he marry me? If he's not going to get any of my things, if he's not going to get X, Y, Z, if he's not even going to get citizenship, why did he actually have to go through and marry me? That's so confusing. So you still don't know the motive. And just for anyone who like missed the last podcast or doesn't know, do you, is there a way you can speed? I married a guy really quickly who I thought was my person forever. We got along really well. And a month after the wedding, I found out that he was unfaithful. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And not only that, but like saying very unkind things about me when I thought we had the most beautiful, healthy, communicative relationship and so to know that the guy you just married was talking really negatively about you to other women online, strangers, yeah. was really threw me for a loop. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so I go, well, then what was the point of that? What was the point of the two years that we had of you acting like you're this amazing hero? Was it to just get a green card? Was it to, well, it wasn't to take my money because you signed a prenup and you were completely fine with that. It wasn't, was it to get followers? Is that really important to you? You could just... Wasn't it though? Fame and he wanted to be a famous actor. You, you are famous and live in Los Angeles. Can't he just trust that? Like, I just feel like he's not some weird, like he, on his own without me attached, like at, before knowing what you know, he, he could work, he could play Vikings. Like, I feel like he'll have no trouble. If he wants to be famous, he could do that. I don't think it's that hard to get famous. So the motive is still <laughs> baffling to you, but in a, in right? a, or is that just in a way, a famous person would say, <laughs> it's not that hard to get famous. It's not that hard to be famous. He, he was sending nudes to so many people at that point, get on OnlyFans. You can make bank. Was like he, he just sending that dick out? Yeah. All the time. Shit, all the man. time and I'm just like oh my god you Shit. could be so successful on these platforms how do you know he was sending the dick out because I saw I have screenshots of the that dick? the woman sent and it's him in the kitchen of the house I just bought <gasps> with dick my out. name tattooed on his chest with his dick out yes dick out your name and then and then after we divorced I got another photo from another random person of, of him in the mirror with my name and his dick out <laughs> Sorry, but it's like the name and dick out. 
I cannot. Wait, that's crazy. What did he do with the Manon tattoo? I don't know, but that girl messaged me and said he's covering it. And he also says he's going to sue you. And I'm like, sue me for what? I've yet to say his name anywhere. And I've never lied about it. That's, that's, I mean, he's... He, so he's in touch with lawyers. And this was one of the girls he was having an affair with. And she was, like, being a bitch about it? Yeah, because I wasn't, like, going to be her friend. Okay. So she, like, turned. How many women reached out to you? Four? Jesus Christ. That's a sex Four addict. that were significant. He's a sex addict. There may have been more. That's a compulsion. It's like it makes no sense. Like, he can't control it. Not that... I'm not excusing it at all. It just sounds no, like... it's it, a compulsion. I yeah. Think, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think... That's when I'm like, his motive, the only thing that makes sense is that, to me, is that he did fall in love yes. with me because, because, <laughs> well, because, 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 and then he self Because them take old bitties. Oh, yeah. And then he sabotaged it. You know how we sabotage our success sometimes? Yeah. I shouldn't say we, I should say people. Because well, I want to program us to have it. But Because at, you can have that. I can have this? Yeah. You can keep that. For Shut those up. of you listening, Shimana just found an old manky feather, and I'm telling her she can have it. Stop Put it in your pocket. It. Wow. Keep it. Do you know this is going to make me $2 million? Oh, I know it will. That actually will. Wish fulfilled. Wish fulfilled. Have you heard of the law of assumption? No, what is that? It's basically the law of attraction, but more fun. Ooh. It's the law of, the law of assumption is basically the same thing, a similar thing as manifestation, but it's like you walk around assuming the wish fulfilled. You just assume you already have it. Mm. So it's, it's like I, I would do some like meditations on it or look into just type in law of assumption and watch some videos on it because I probably do a really shitty job of explaining it, but I'm super into it. And it's really fun to do meditations like that. And it's just like talks about the power of our human imagination and how it, we can assume whatever the thing, the goal is that you want to achieve. You, you see it every morning, every night. You just allow yourself 10 minutes to really visualize yourself having that. And then you just walk around the day assuming that you have whatever that thing is or that feeling is or that person is or that, you know, that, I mean... And that's the thing. At the end of the day, we want these things because of the feeling we get from it, right? We yeah, want I think I've been doing it yeah. backwards. Uh, what do you mean? I've been feeling it, but not visualizing it. So it's like I'm constantly creating a feeling, mm -hmm. but almost the feeling doesn't feel like it's attached to a visual result. So I'm like, okay, I feel good, but I don't see things that are coming into fruition in the way that I think. I ha I've had a harder time visualizing for some reason. It's my last modality. Listening is good, mm -hmm. feeling's good, mm -hmm. taste, touch, but visualizing, I'm like, well, what do you want? Like, is there a goal that you want to come that, is there something that's like, keeps coming into your head that you want that you don't have? Yeah. And what would that be? I want I mean, I'm my sure movie there's... made. Okay. Right? Yeah. When I wrote, I'd like that to be made. Yeah. And have it be wildly successful. So you see it. Can you see that happening? So, I can see it happening. Do you do you spend time? Do but you I take think I don't go. I go. Oh, I don't know how it's going to happen, and then I get. That's where I get stuck. Yeah. So you don't worry about the how. You see yourself at the interview of the premiere, and you see visualize the theater, visualize the audience laughing, crying, whatever the movie's supposed to do, and just see it visualize that and spend like 10 to 20 minutes a day doing that. Mm. Like also, like I want to make this, this like new bridesmaids with you, me, Brittany and Chelsea, right? I'm obsessed with making it. Mm -hmm. So I see the four of us doing those interviews. You know, when you do the interviews, what do you even call them? Panels? Yeah. Uh, th not the panels, but like, what do you call them? Press, press, press. Yeah, that. So I see the four of us sitting there like cracking up trying to answer questions but we can't because we're laughing so yeah. hard yeah and i just see it and i and i see us in mexico filming and just having like the time of our life like i just feel it and i see it 
And then the how just sort of like I have a meeting tomorrow about yeah. about you know what's interesting yeah. I have been I have been thinking about it a lot mm -hmm. and I will say within days I did have someone come up to me and literally go do you have any rom coms that you've written I'm a producer and I just want to make one and I was like what, what? I don't know how legit he is or anything like that but, but so I you're did already take note of that. it. No, no, no. I just, yeah. got, I'm now I'm like, okay, I need to like get my script to where I feel so confident about sending it out. Cause there, I, I feel like it needs an edit, a round of edits. But what? that's insane that yeah. you were just visualizing it. And then a producer came up yeah. and went, Hey, like what that's world? True. You're right. I don't need to worry about the how. Yeah. A producer just came up to you and went, Hey, do you have any rom cut? Yeah. It actually sounds like a joke. Like I just made that up. I swear. Like yeah. that happened. Where did this producer come from? Um, it was a general gathering of people that have a common problem. <laughs> okay. Okay. See, I mean, that's crazy right there. That just shows that yeah. it is effective. It is effective. Absolutely. I just, I'm like, well, what about the work? Like, don't you have to work a little bit with? Yeah. Yeah. But that, ha but that happens too. I mean, that, um, you mean the work of. What? Yeah, like there's, I have to take action. Of course, yes. It's you definitely can't just be like no. You can't just be meditating and visualizing. Like you have to have the courage to take the steps and yeah. all of that. Yeah. But I think believing it's possible and feeling yeah. deserving of that success yeah. is like so imperative. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that, then like the work's never going to happen because you have these deep rooted beliefs yeah. that you don't deserve it or you're not yeah. good enough. Or you're not worthy. So yeah. it's squashing those old ideas yeah. and like feeling fully deserving yes. and knowing and knowing that it's not an if it's a when yeah. and like, right. And walking around with that. And then, and then all of a sudden you're more compelled to do the work mm -hmm. and take the steps because you know, it's happening. Yes. So if you're like, I want to make this movie in the next two years, well then, you know it's happening. So, oh, I should get to like rewriting this because I know it's going to be yeah, shot in the next two, right. two or, the, or the next year. Yeah. So you that's know? why it's important to put time limits. Yeah, I think so too. And goal settings of certain dates. Totally. And then reverse engineering the goal and going, okay, what actually needs to happen in order for the goal to get, uh, a ch what is it? Yeah, achieved. And it's just, okay, I saw somewhere, um, Bob, did you ever watch, did you ever watch like Bob Proctor? No. He's like a big, um, like she actually died. Oh. I'm sorry to tell For you me? that. For oh. me? I'm sorry to tell you. That's okay. He was like 200. He, he was like 95. Is that the guy that holds the stick? No. Uh, maybe. He, he does like law of attraction videos, but his big thing was he teaches from the book Think and Grow Rich a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so he just said, write six goals a day. Do six goals a day. Like six tasks a day. That's it. Six. And then like it, whatever you don't get done that day, you take it over to the next day. And if you got three done, then you put the three there and then you add three more and it's just six things a day. That's it. I don't know. Something like as simple as that. Cause sometimes it could be like overwhelming. Where do I start? Like, you know, right. Like you, it's not make my movie in one day. It's no edit five pages. Yeah. Send to editor. And that's the only thing I Call do that day. Producer. Yeah, exactly. You know, whatever. And the then more will more be more revealed day. as it goes. Totally. Try not to like future trip and figure out every single detail in one day. Cause that's will never happen. Yeah. But none of in these the steps that, like, matter. If, if, if a person wants to drop yeah. 50 pounds, they don't, you don't do it in one day. Yes. You literally just go, okay, what can I do today? Okay. Drink green juice whatever, walk more, Intermittent you know, fast. like I just started a running class, which is so intimidating to me. So intimidating. But I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go. Even if I walk on the treadmill, that's fine. Cause I showed up and Why so I'm going to try the running build. class. Why? Just to build strength or cardio, like heart yeah. stuff, okay. you know? Yeah. And because it seemed, cause I was scared of it and I was like, I don't want to be scared of something. Wow. I'm also joining a dance team. Eight seconds left, and I want to hear all about this dance team. <laughs> My next partner has a product I use literally every day. It's called AG1 Athletic Greens. Y'all. 
The shit is amazing and it tastes so good. Okay, I started taking it because I wanted better gut health, better immune system, more energy, better skin, hair, nails, all of it. AG1 has it all. 75 minerals, vitamins, whole sourced ingredients, totally vegan, gluten-free. All you do is you scoop a little spoon of powder into a bottle, shake it up with water. I squeeze a little lemon in there. It tastes so good and you're getting all your vitamins and minerals. You don't have to take any other vitamins. You just drink this green juice every single morning. It's how I start my day and I'm truly addicted. Like the taste is so good. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a one year free supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs. If you order the subscription with me, all you gotta do is go to athleticgreens.com slash idiot podcast. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash idiot podcast to get a one one year free supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs. Y'all, it's your nutritional insurance. Don't mess with your health and come through, come through. Dance team. Tell me more about the dance team. No man, and what inspired you to join the dance team? This company reached out. They wanted to do a collaboration. So I said, dance, me, absolutely. Wow. So I went over there, hmm. learned to dance, sweat my booty off. You're kidding me, you had butt sweat? I had butt sweat. Oh, shit. Breast sweat, underarm pin sweat. Really? And uh, learned to dance. Oh my goodness. So I'm gonna do it every Thursday night. What kind of dance? I like hip hop. <laughs> hip hop? Yeah. Really? Really. Just hip hop or are you doing? I think that's where we start. If there's another form of it, I will find out. Would you try tap dancing? I would try it. Really? I Swing? would. Yeah. Really? My eyes hurt. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't hurt your eyes? No, it was comfortable. Oh, God. Are you okay? <laughs> Do they have kegels for the eyes? Ooh, kegels for your eyes. For your eyes. Kegels for your eyes. You're telling me you do kegels for your eyes? For your hair there. Really? Hold on, let me do an eye kegel. Oh, that felt good. I just came. <laughs> I cannot. What is wrong oh, with you? Me. You're you disgusting. <laughs> Oh my God. You're gross. Don't say that. I would never. It just came into my eyes. It just came in my eyes. It feels so oh, good. This is sick. sick. Disgusting. This is going to get banned. We need to stop, stop it, it right now. now. Don't talk about I come on my podcast. Only a super sick person would do what That'd you just That'd be pretty did. sick if you could come That'd out of your so eyes. That'd be so sick. I gotta say. That'd be pretty sick. You okay? All right. You have Minnie Mouse right there. My mom calls me Minnie Mouse. That's really sweet. I wonder what made you think of that since we were just talking about eye cum. It was a weird segue. You're right, but I, I looked over there. <coughs> okay. So that's, that's what happened. Now t tell me, <laughs> tell me, man, and the dance, so you're going to do a performance. That's fun. That's like your 13 year old self coming out. Yep. I love it. I love that you do things like that. I don't usually. Oh. I'm just starting to because I can't take it anymore. You can't take what? <laughs> <laughs> My God. Shit. Life? Fuck. Just being afraid of stuff. I just, I'm, I signed up for an acting class, so I'm in that. I signed up for the dance team because I just, it's like I went to Daybreaker, which is 7 a.m. dancing at the museum, and it's just like people with glow sticks having pancakes and like of dancing. You would do I was that. like, I need to like, I'm still a kid. That's I'm the most like man and shit I've ever heard. Glow sticks and pancakes <laughs> at a museum at 7 a.m. Like, I don't know who else would do that but man and. Now, yeah, because I ha I'm like, I, if I don't do these things, and I'm not alive, and I'm not happy, honestly. Whoa. If I'm still just sitting there, like, on the couch, which is, like, what I've done, I'm like, what am I doing? I like yeah. being out there. And then I've realized when I go out, I meet people. Oh. Yeah, you know? That's nice. Like, I joined the dance team, and this woman, I was like, oh, my God, I know you. I actually knew her. But I haven't seen her in eight years. 
And so and you I was just like reconnect. Connecting. And then the other girl was like, I'm going to Daybreaker. And I was like, I'll go with you. And you went? And then I went there and, and I, I saw this other girl I haven't seen in years. And she's a life coach. And she's like, you should meet my agent. Or you should meet my friend. He's a top agency. And right before that, I went to the sound bath of this musician, of this woman who sings. And the girl next to me, she's like, I'm an intuitive. And you're going to sign with a really big agency. And I was like, OK. And how, why would that happen within the same 24 hours? You know? Whoa. It's because I went outside. Because you left your house. Yeah. So you, there's more possibilities. That's really inspiring. That's really, really inspiring. I don't think I'm there yet to do that kind of thing. I, you I went outside. We shot that sketch. And we, we did got, go those outside. And strangers walked by. Yes. Yes. But I don't take like classes or anything. And I've always hated classes. And I've, because I've like felt insecure in them or like didn't want to be called out or like exposed for being dumb. You know, I have yeah. these like, whatever. Because I, I, I was like never a good student, so I just like still carry that with me now. Yeah. Of like I don't like classes, so I don't do them. Because I like yeah, I do my own thing. Like I don't need classes. Yeah, yeah come through <laughs> to one of the classes. Like, come through. You want to come through? Come through to one of the classes. Because I won't be there. <laughs> come through. You want me to come through? You should. Should I come just through? Just roll through. You want me to come to through? One of the dance classes. Come should through. I come through? Come through. You want me to come through? Yeah. To your dance class? Come through. I'll come through. I'll come through. You want me to come through? <laughs> you want me to come through? <laughs> I'll come through. I'll come through. <laughs> I'll come through. I. I'll come through. Come through. Just come through. <laughs> for an hour we do this. For an hour. For an hour. I'll come through. Come through. Hi. <laughs> I'll come through. Come through. I, yeah. You want me to come through? Come through. <laughs> Funny for no reason. Now, what are you most scared of? <laughs> Whales! Oh my god, are you serious? They freak me out, they're so big. Imagine being in the ocean, you just see this dark thing come under you. And it's huge, and it's, it's like, and in the water, it doesn't so do cold. that noise. But. <laughs> <laughs> but you realize it's just a boat, because whales don't make that noise. <laughs> that was a boat. Come through. Come through. Holy shit. <laughs> That's like a that. boat. That's a boat. Wait, what does a whale say again? Mm. Is that oh, right? that's a bus. Or isn't it like... <laughs> is that not a whale? <laughs> oh, underwater? <laughs> oh, is that it? They're like... <laughs> right? Oh, it's dolphins that go... <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> or do whales go, come through? Come through. <laughs> what the fuck do whales say? They don't say anything. All right, so why are you so scared well, of? Well, they say something. <laughs> because they could swallow me whole. <laughs> OK. They but could swallow me whole. No. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, Manon, how many whales do you know that have swallowed a human I whole? I don't know any whales, <laughs> first of all. I know no whales. <laughs> All right. First, I just don't like the size. <laughs> I also don't like knives because they're sharp. <laughs> mm. <laughs> My dad used to go, ah, ah, and he'd, no. he'd hold the knife and he'd go like this. Wait, that's messed up. <laughs> The first one's funny, like, oh, I'm cutting carrots. Oh, and I cut my finger, but that's up. like... It was really horrifying, I'm telling you. I had a yeah. traumatic childhood. And then you know what he did? Do you ever see the movie Get Out? Yeah. Remember when the guy runs really fast straight to the camera and then turns? Yes. My dad used to do that to me as a child all the time. And so when he saw the movie, he's like, you're, there's a part in Get Out you're going to really like. And I was like, oh, okay. And everyone was like terrified at that part. And I could not stop laughing because it reminded me of my father. Oh, but you were laughing though. Yeah. So you did like it. Well, yeah, it's not, it, eventually, but the, I would say the first time my dad did it, it was scary. When you were little. Yeah. Because he'd run at you and then turn. Because he was a grown turn. man running like this at you. 
But did you? And he had a serious face. Did you like, cry? <laughs> oh my! Seriously? He wasn't like. He wasn't like. He wasn't like. I'm gonna no, get you, Manon. Like, he put his head down. <laughs> That's like honestly sadistic. He's a sadistic man. But now, but for real, for real, for real, for real. You gonna come through? <laughs> you gonna come through? For real, for real? D did he try and terrorize you? Was that the intent? Was there malicious intent? No. I don't he just didn't understand how terrifying it was. He's just never been a dad before, so he doesn't understand that like he's larger than me. He's male. I was small. I didn't know anything. And like he didn't realize like nervous system things. It's like when kid, kids get jerked around mm -hmm. when they're really little. It's like that does damage on mm -hmm. their nervous system, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it wasn't like malicious. It was, it was like not, not ignorant. That's not the right word either. I think he either. was just trying to get in a reaction. Yeah, okay. It and was like playful, but it yeah. scared you. Okay, all right. He would also throw me on the bed and then I almost bounced and hit the window. <laughs> He would put me in a blanket and then throw me on the bed. <laughs> Your dad didn't do that? No. <laughs> no, he didn't. Okay. I would buy weed for my dad, though. You'd buy weed for your dad? Yeah, he'd be like, yo, like, here's 20 bucks. Give me some weed. That's so nice. I'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> of you to get him weed. I'd be like, can I get some lunch money? He's like, we don't have lunch money, Laura. And then two days later, he'd be like, give me a gram, will you? Yeah. My dad acted like he never did drugs. Which really? Which he did. I know it. I just know it, Dad. <laughs> I know it. But we were talking about what you were scared of. Whales and knives. All right. Now, because I would say, for me, what I'm most scared of is, I suppose at times death, but besides that, because I go in and out of that, I'm like... Oh, you, you want to go for the mental... Like no, 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 no. I don't actually. L performing live. That is what I'm terrified of. And I know, you? oh yeah. And I know I want to do it. I want to like write a live show. I want to write a live show, not like traditional. Have you done stand up before? Yeah, I did here oh. and there. And I never like absolutely loved it. I, it's not like I went on stage and I was like, this is the best thing ever. And I would do okay. I never like killed cause I don't think I give it enough time. But I would, I would have shows that were pretty good and I would have five minutes of material, like not much, you know, but I would get, I would go to like the comedy store and places like that. And then I like blew up online. So I was like, I never have to do this. I can reach so many more people and I don't have to leave my house. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. I don't have to go out at like late at night around alcohol and like mostly men and like, I didn't love the scene. I just, I, I found it so exciting that I could make content you know, during the day and like yeah. post it to millions of people. Like that was cool. Totally. So I was like, I, and I was making a living doing it. So I was like, I have no reason to put myself out there. Now I feel like I've been doing, you know, social media content for so many years that like I'm craving something more. So like movies and live, like yeah. I really want to do a live show and I, oh my God, I think it'd be so much fun to tour with, with yeah. all of us girls. But like, I want to write like a, show and I'm I have the idea and and like I feel like I know roughly what I want but I'm so scared you know when you're so scared of something that you keep procrastinating mm -hmm. and putting it off that's my whole life yeah okay okay yeah but like so I'm so scared that I keep procrastinating because I'm so scared and I want to get past that so what do I do you just go to one open mic that's it. That sounds horrible. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. That makes sense. Yeah, don't do it. But 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 first I need to actually write something. Sure. Then what do I do? We'll write something and then rehearse it in your living room and then go to one open mic. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I can't help you. I don't want to go to an open mic, man. And so then ask to go on somebody's show. Say, hey, can't I just write an hour and then rent out a little theater sure. and perform it for like 30 people yeah. and like test it out? Sure. Can I do that? Yeah, of course. But <sighs> it's just like, to, I'm saying to get past the fear of getting up there with a microphone because it's been a while like uh -huh. i would say that's just the first band-aid to rip off 
Oh, it's just like getting back up there. Yeah, because then you then once you go, oh, I, I just was up there for five minutes and I told the story. Oh my God, so easy fun. Mm -hmm. Then I feel like that theater thing of 30 people would happen a lot quicker because you're so not afraid to be in front of people again live. Do you know what's interesting is like our special problems meetings that we go to are actually weirdly good for like being able to, okay, it's three minutes and you share for three minutes in front of a group and yeah. you're just like, rigorously honest and like it tends to be funny sometimes because you're just saying the truth and we have mm -hmm. funny brains mm -hmm. so I feel like that's weirdly yeah a place where it's not like it's not stand-up at all but it's like speaking your truth in a, in a public setting that's just a like really strangers. good way of looking at it I wish I want to I want to do that the next time I write material is just see what comes through for a share because honestly I really like the way that people talk in those rooms totally. and the way I talk on stage sometimes does feel like I'm going to tell some jokes and I don't want it to be you like, you guys wanna... ever, um, <laughs> yeah. don't you hate it when, yeah. It's like, so I... I recently, yeah, that's exactly how it sounds. Shut up. Yeah. Talk normal. Yeah. Talk normal. Yeah. Talk normal. Yeah. That's a big fear. I guess if you think about what I'm afraid of, it's um, never have achieved the dreams that I am here to achieve. So that's the fear, though, like you already, well, I can't say you already have achieved your dreams, but I gotta say, you've achieved tried quite a bit. Thank you. If I'm honest. Look like a little fish. Aww. You don't think that you've achieved your dreams? No. I was supposed to be a major time director of feature films. Oh, is that what you want to do? Because that's like your whole life ahead of you. Yeah. I feel like people don't. There's time. Oh, hell yeah, there's time. What and the there was a time where I wanted to be on SNL. Like, that was a huge dream. <sighs> please. That's God, get don't. We, oh, please. But I, I think I'm being protected. We don't want to do that, man. We don't want to do SNL. That's so tenuous. We already do it. It is so <laughs> 10 years ago. It is so... SNL. Oh, yeah. Beyond but it's the... still... That's still, there's still an 18-year-old that's like that. You know what I mean? She's oh, still yeah. in there. Yeah. So I've, even yeah. though the, the my age now man and is like, no, honey, you don't want to be there for six days a week grinding. Like, I know people that have been begging, on the show. Begging that are for the sobbing. sketch to get on. Yeah. And they cry every single day. Yeah. Like, no one that's been on that show is like, oh my God, it's the best experience. Like, sorry, SNL, you're watching. Sorry, SNL. But sorry, you should have hired us. No. Um, I just Dumb think, fuck. like, the fr I know I like freedom. We would have been really good on that show. We're just saying, like, like Lauren, like, we're just saying, like, we would have been really, really good, good on that show. show. I think we really would have like brought a lot of people on there. They just wouldn't give us a chance. Watched one of the tapes we and, like, brought us in. Like, we can, for, like, we can bring us in at the same time. Chance, Cause, like, you we have no experience to be on the show. We are. And you chose other people for whatever like, reason, but like we're done. right like, here. Honestly, that shows like you that you don't it. have a lot you of killed it to yourself. Like, or you would have. What did you just say? I said they killed their own show oh. by not hiring us. <clears throat> exactly. <sighs> not but that, I also like want yeah. to have kids and like live in yeah. LA and like have my freedom. And I don't think I would have had that. And so I do think about that. And and I swear, like yeah. I was. I remember last whatever a year ago, two years ago, I was like thinking like, should I send a tape? Should I send a tape? And then I talked to my friend who was on it mm -hmm. and he had nothing good to say. Whoa. So it was the worst few years or year of my life. And I was like, what? And it was just like, I heard all the, I heard the same thing I've always heard. And it's nothing against the show. I yeah. just think it's really, it takes a lot. It's like hurts sweet creators that just want their stuff to be seen, but there's just not enough time yeah. to get your stuff out there. And for us, we're so lucky that we have the space to just do whatever we want when we want. Exactly. Like uh, like most of the sketches that we've written would not have made it on the show. Oh, are you kidding me? They'd be most like, nope. Of, mo yeah, it would get nope. scrapped. And I'm like, well, that's not, I find that funny though. Yeah. I we'll really be like, want this to be on the show. We'll be like a sketch where we just keep complimenting each other and they'd be like, you're fired. And then we're like, oh, okay, darn. we'll just do it ourselves. Yeah. Which they wouldn't let you do content yourselves if you're... Whoa. That's like one of the things is like you have to... Because all your ideas make, need to go on the show. Yeah. 
And wow. that, I was like, oh, well then no. Wow. That's crazy. Wow. Just stop social media. That's insane. But yeah, as a kid before social media, that was the dream. Like if you were funny, you wanted to be on SNL like that. I was obsessed with that idea too. As, yeah. as a kid, it was like, oh yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And I wanted to be on the, let's, let's be clear. I yeah. want to be on SNL when, when there was certain people on it. Mm, yeah. I don't know what SNL is going on today. I really no. don't. I see some sketches and sometimes it's really funny. Yeah. I want to be on it when Jimmy Fallon and Kristen Wiig. But that was a different I time. I really want to be on it when they were on it, if that's possible. That was a different time. Nobody really watches it anymore. Now everyone's on social media. That's how they get their comedy and their content. They're fix. Definitely. I know. So how, what can I tell that young woman inside of me that thinks that that's, she's failed because she hasn't made it on there? Tell her to come through. <coughs> come through? <laughs> come through. <laughs> Come through. Well, <laughs> but, but <coughs> oh no, <laughs> I did. No. I did not get you sick. I'm not sick. You know what? She wants. <laughs> I'm gonna tell her. Yeah. That um, God's got a plan, and it's mm -hmm. far better than you can even ever imagine, and it's already coming to fruition. Because you have ultimate freedom, and more people will see you this way. And I love you and I hear you and it's all working out in your favor and you can share anytime you want. Wow, I love that. Whoa. She's like, oh, okay. I love that. <laughs> That's really sweet. And I love that mantra. This is one of my favorite mantras right now. Today is a beautiful op. <laughs> That's so good. That's good. I'm going to adopt that. Today is a reality. Today is a reality. That's great. Today's a gratitude. Oh my gosh. I'm going to write that down. Today's a gratitude. Tweet. Tweet that. Tweet it? Yes. Tweet it and put it in your book. Oh my God. Today. <laughs> today is a beautiful day of opportunity. I am Zach. <laughs> you are Zach? Who's Zach? Today's a beautiful opportunity. I am Zach. What? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Today is a beautiful day of opportunity. I am Zach. Today is a beautiful day of opportunity. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Where I'm meant to be. Ah! Today. <laughs> Hold on. Today is a beautiful day of opportunity. I am exactly where I'm meant to be. I open myself to the universe and trust in the unfolding of my life. That's it. I love it. Thank you. <coughs> Honestly, so good. And one that's good for the body is mm -hmm. I love and approve of myself. And I love and approve of my I sweet love body. I love sweet ass pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I love my sweet pussy. I love my <laughs> sweet, sweet pussy. I love you, pussy. I, I, I love my butthole. Butthole? <laughs> butthole. This is not a good podcast. <laughs> what is this? Is this it? Is this what I came for? What is this? <laughs> I mean, you know... Look, buttholes, I come, you chose to be here. And this is all part of it. Yeah. I thought it got really deep, almost as deep as your vagina, because I know you got a deep puss. Well, you okay, I don't know how do. deep, like, I don't know. <laughs> God, that's weird information. I've never told anyone that. Okay. And you, tell, you told it on the podcast. Is that going to make people look at me like that? Look, look to at... Like when they look at me, are they going to go, oh my God, I know deep. her. She has a deep? It's deep. Where'd you meet your man? <laughs> Speaking of deep puss, where'd you meet him? A coffee shop. Are you for real? He reached out to me though on Facebook. All right. Great. Wow, romantic. <laughs> 
And he said, are you still <laughs> acting? And I said, yeah. He said, I have a script. So we met for coffee, he gave me the script. I read the script and then I got another coffee and I was like, yeah, I like it. He's like, okay, so can we count you in for an I, what's it called? An IOU? IUD, IUD. I think it's called. <laughs> can we use an IUD? Okay. And then nothing happened. But did, were you attracted gay. to him? No. You I didn't thought think he was gay. You thought he was gay? Yeah, which is fine. There's nothing we've against. Got some, there's there's we've nothing. We've got some gays in the room. <laughs> behind the room. each camera. <laughs> we've got one gay per camera. Um, one gay per cam. Camera per cam. So I just, you know, I just didn't think anything of it. There was no flirtation. There was Not just even nothing. a little bit. You didn't no. think about that. No. You hit that? No. I was oh, really immersed in my therapy for my marriage. And then when did it turn? Um, well, you and I had that conversation on the 24th. It was in the last podcast when she revealed to me and I was like, okay, I'm done with my marriage. Like I've given it all my, given, I gave it my all. I'm done. I'm no longer even going to try for this guy. We did, our, we did our um, therapy session and then the new year started. And then I went to another coffee with Johnny and then we didn't really talk about the script. We just laughed because there was this kid who was walking with his dad and his dad was holding the kid's hand and the kid just dropped his legs and the dad kept dragging the kid. It was a very funny visual and I started laughing and he started laughing. And so it was a first kind of like, oh my God, we thought the same thing was hilarious. Uh -huh. And then we started laughing and you got I was like, three minutes I left think, to wrap this up. I think because I had officially closed my heart mm -hmm. to the ex, something must have been a little bit open in where it wasn't before. So that moment when the kid was being dragged across the, <laughs> the street and you thought Sidewalk. that was so hilarious that he was skinning his knees. child was skinning his knees, was skinning. bleeding. <laughs> the child was skinning his knees on the sidewalk. Mm, hilarious. And the blood was just like dripping mm. from the knees. And, and you, it's funny. And you two were killing yourselves laughing. Dying. At this child's pain and misfortune. He was, he was squealing like, mm, a, like okay. he's never been okay. in that much pain. <laughs> Still laughing about it now, huh? It's funny. Mm, still holds up, huh? Yeah. So you two were both laughing and is that the moment that you were like, wait, maybe I like this guy? No. Still not? Still. Still platonic. It, 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 yes. But he liked you. Did he admit to you? I don't know. He I don't didn't know. say? He didn't say? I just, I know in that coffee. When did he start liking you? So he goes, hey, can, um, what are you doing tomorrow? And I was like, I'm going to go on a hike. No, it wasn't like, hey, what are you doing tomorrow? It was like, so, all right, cool. What are you doing tomorrow? And I was like, oh, I'm going on a hike. And he said, okay, I'll come. I was like, uh, okay. So he came on a hike with me. And we're just walking side by side, like cracking jokes. And I was like, oh, I really like his personality. And then we, after the hike, we went and got like massages. I was like, he's like, what are you going to do now? I was like, I think I'm going to go get like a Chinese foot massage or whatever. He's like, okay, I'll come. So he went. And then like a few days later, I was like, I'm going to breath work if you want to come. And he's like, I've never done it. And he passed out in breath work. And then we got tea. And then I said, okay, good night, Johnny. Like going back to my car. And he said at that moment, his heart melted. And then that's when he, his feelings started. And at that point, I think I was like, oh, there's a little crush, but like, I'm not looking at all. But we just kept hanging out and I really liked being around him. He was so light from what I was just experiencing. Like my ex-husband was very dense, dense energy. And I didn't even know it until we ended it. Whoa. And then I felt lighter again. Anyway. We'll talk next time about Johnny. Wow. And three years together. It's like a healthy, functional relationship in so many ways. And that's amazing. And comment below if you liked this episode or any <laughs> other questions you have. And we'll talk next time because we're definitely doing this. We have nine seconds left. Anything else you want to say? Go. Come on. Deep badge. Deep badge.